I'm going to hang up this phone and then I'm going to show these people what you don't want them to see. I'm going to show them a world without you, a world without rules and controls, without borders or boundaries, a world where anything is possible. Where we go from there is a choice I leave to you. Here's your look at the new Hot Toys, The Matrix. This is the Neo 1-6 scale collectible figure. Now the choice is of course yours. You can take the blue pill. This review will end. You can wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe or, or you can take the red pill. Stay and watch this review and I'll show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Now, to get this review underway, we're going to first figure out how tall Neo stands. And to the very top of his head, top of his hair, I should say, we'll stop the tape measure right there. The figure actually is at an exact height of 12 inches tall. Switching that over to centimeters, let me go ahead and do that right now for you. You're looking at 30.4 centimeters is Neo. For the figure's display stand, he comes with that baseball diamond stand that we've looked at with various hot toy figures before on this channel. And here it appears to be the lobby scene, the very famous scene with both him and Trinity going basically through the security on their way up to save Morpheus. Now a really neat looking display stand making use of various different textures and different uh, colors. A uh, very dated by at least my own personal opinion but it's almost kind of got like a marbled terrain flooring here and offsetting to that is a bit of like a gray textured granite. On the front, we've got the Matrix Neo front placard. I do like that quite a bit. I also like that it's not quite uh, like a silver. Usually these are like a metal plate. I think black favors it a much more better job than giving it this a silver placard. Some sad news though, sad news colleagues of mine. The display stand uh, has broken. I still kept this in the review as intact, 
this part of this review rather than just simply gluing it in place pretending it never happened because I don't do that. I'm going to show you guys what exactly is wrong with things like these figures. Now unfortunately just by how fragile this is this clip basically would just go right there and this would support the back of Neo's leg or his torso sort of just gave it away there. Uh, unfortunately it did break off. Broke cleanly off as cleanly as a break could be. I'm going to have to take some glue and glue it in place, but the all honest truth of it all, as I said, I'm likely more to attach it via his leg rather than his torso. I guess this would be a good opportunity to talk a little bit more about that. Still a little sad that this part had to break off. As you could probably guess it though, the neck is adjustable. This from the bottom to the very top is fully adjustable. So you can bend it and manipulate it any which way that you want. I don't know if the intent is actually to have this clip around Neo's waist. Just by its size actually, I find it's not the easiest to get around his waist. Let me just put, him, put the figure down here for a sec and bring this up. There we go. One of the other tricks that I usually do is I just take the screw out completely. I mean, it's visibly there that you see a big hole, hello, on the other side there. But I feel like it never really needs a screw. I mean, it's not a case where it's going to slide down on me. I never really feel the need where I have to tighten it back up again. So often at times, yeah, I just leave the screw out completely. But as I was saying though, the clip doesn't seem to quite support Neo's waist. It doesn't quite fit all the way around. And then I got to myself thinking as of course in the opener of this review, I like to do these little montages showing off the different ways that you can pose the figure. And it quickly dawned on me, at least from my own perception of it all, and take my perception with certainly a grain of salt, is that I feel like the clip is better suited for Neo's leg, maybe even intended for his leg rather than it is for his waist. And the reason why I say that is when we get to like the more drastic poses, like for example, when he is firing off in the lobby scene, it's not so much gonna be the waist that you're gonna be counting on, it's gonna be Neo's leg. So as you twist this around, you're going to clip this onto Neo's leg and then you're going to use the hand, of course, the hand support to brace Neo up. Let me see if I can actually grab it to show you what I'm talking about here. See, there is Neo right there in a slightly familiar more pose. Of course, it's missing his jacket, but we're going to spin it around. You can see what I've done there. Yeah, I've just clipped it around his leg, his thigh to be more exact. I feel like, again, this is probably the plan and why they gave you the adjustable neck the way that they did for it to clip around Neo's thigh and not so much rather around his waist. This can come in handy actually several times, even if you want to do yourself bullet time with this figure, something I want to also talk about before we forget about stuff. But uh, again, I feel like this is intended to be clipped around his thigh, not so much his waist. As we talk a little bit about bullet time, I also deliberately took his jacket off because I felt it was better to look at the figure without stuff. And then we can add stuff to it and then kind of look at the figure after that. But the one other thing that really does grind my gears slightly is the fact that if you do want to display this figure in bullet time, granted this isn't going to be the terrain from the scene with the bullet time. It's a shame actually that they didn't put holes something around the front area here in which you could have pegged in clear posts that would have had the rippled bullets attached to it. Unfortunately, of all the accessories that Neo has, and he does have a fair share of accessories, let me just twist this around, sorry, it was driving me crazy. For all the accessories and uh, armory that Neo has in his possession, unfortunately, he doesn't have things like bullet time bullet ripples and if that was the look that you wanted to display Neo with sadly that's not the case you're not going to be able to do that I really don't know why they couldn't have incorporated at the very least like little rods like little rods that just would have had very fragile I understand yes but if they had only had the rippled bullets attached to clear posts and then you can simply just plug it into place probably not completely in a row but you certainly get what I'm talking about right there. I very least hope you know what I'm talking about. So that's the only thing, the only bummer, the only kind of stinkeroo when it comes to this figure. For all the good things that he does have in his possession, which of which we will be looking at very, very soon, it's a shame like his display stand sort of lets me down. Even if they had used those same holes for the lobby scene, you could have also had bullets as an accessory. And, you know, my hand is sort of in the way of everything here. But if they had only had little clear posts, you could have used it as bullet time 
in the top building scene. Or you could have also used same clear posts with bullets firing towards Neo as he is, of course, leaping and flipping his way, cartwheeling his way, if you will, through the lobby scene. With that being said, let's have a look at the figure. Now, again, when you get this guy out of packaging, he'll actually have his trench coat attached. I simply have just left it off for the time being because I feel it makes more sense to add stuff on instead of looking at the figure and then taking the jacket off and resuming where we left off. Nope, 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 we're gonna start the other way around. So here we have Neo wearing a long sleeve, slightly elasticized shirt. I did also keep these hands in place because I find like the hands, maybe the more I look at it aren't as bad, but they seem very, very large. These of course would be suitable hands for at the very end. Oh, right, yeah. We don't have those little clear pegs with the bullets firing towards him. But this is kind of the final scene in which, of course, the agents are firing at Neo. And Neo is just abruptly stopping those bullets in midair. Now, granted, yes, there are a few little changes to this suit. He would have had the bullets, of course, in the front of his fabric. And he would have had the removal of the holster, as this holster wouldn't have been attached. There is theoretically a way to take solely just this harness off. And just before I show you, or lack thereof, I just want to show you that there is compartments there to house things such as his pistols or semi-automatic uh, uh, guns as well. But he's got some strapping there on the side, sort of a faux leather happening here. He's got some stitching there running around. I keep poking the camera with his hand. Some stitching around the holstered sections. This, Unfortunately, this figure, as you can probably guess, it is a magnet when it comes to hairs. I find myself quickly stopping stopping the hammer that is just kind of taking little hairs and fibers or whatever else that would have attached themselves to the figure and trying my best to resume with the review. But uh, yeah, the harness would have come off. I know in the montage, I just simply left it on, but he also would have had bullets in his shirt. And Hot Toys didn't really think too far as to this is gonna be the way that you're gonna to wanna to display the figure. So they didn't give you an alternate shirt that had the bloodied holes when he was shot at basically point blank by uh, Agent Smith. Uh, but if you are looking ankle in to take the holster off for some reason whatsoever, I don't, I don't really know why you would want to, you would just simply unharness, unhook the belt as you would a one-to-one -one scale belt. And then you would unloop that. And then you would basically pull this section of the belt out from these loops. And then once those are detached from here and here, you would just simply just slide. I went for dramatic pause. You simply would just slide the harness off. That's it. That's all that's required. It's just basically this point and this point right here. But uh, just for this, I've just simply left it on. Uh, he's also sporting a rather small framed pair of cargo pants. I say small framed because the figure does seem small framed until you realize Keanu Reeves isn't a very buff individual, though they're to be fair, there's musculature that they've put into his torso section here. You can feel like there's abdomen. You can feel that there's pectoral muscles, talking muscles there after all. But he is awfully on a thinner frame, sort of like the Eric Draven from also Hot Toys. Want to really go back and re-review that guy at some point. But it does have a few pockets on the sides. I guess functional to the degree that you can't put stuff in them. Don't really know what you would put in them, but he does have functional pockets on both sides. And then he has the leg straps. This very awkward it is accurate to the movie but this very awkward loop it's just there for no reason whatsoever again it's accurate to the film just it's weird it just makes no sense and then it's also looped around to the back there of his belt kind of everything is harnessed together joined together in happy harmony as we work our way down to neo's boots now i am a little bothered by the boots i guess what they were going with is almost a leather material but the leather material does feel thin um, as you are moving it up and down, you can kind of see, as I hope you will see, that, yeah, the material is a little thin. Sometimes that does problem cause problems down the road that uh, splits and cracks start to develop in material similar to this. I wish they could have used a thicker material. It is also very much bigger than his legs. Again, it's not stuff that you're really going to see too much when you got the figure standing on display, but... I feel I'd do a disservice if I wasn't going to simply mention that. He's got some buckles running down the front, sort of these shin guards of a similar material. I believe that's similar to also the Reboot logo. 
Uh, got some stitching there as well, and uh, some nice, nice texturing done to the boots. It's to note as well that the boots are of plastic. I don't believe that they've simply slid, whoop, slid the boot onto a foot. Instead, it looks like this is a plastic appliance, and uh, then they've, they've probably. I'm just seeing where they would have actually stitched it. Yeah, it almost looks like they would have stitched it right here, where then fabric appliance would have been added. This would have stayed still plastic, although it does, yeah, it does still have the bunching. This part here does feel like it's a dense plastic, though. I, I am spending a lot of time talking about the boots. On the undersides, speaking of boots, one last time, one go around finally, uh, there's the undertreads of Neo's boots. It says Warner Brothers, and then on the other side, of course, of course it does, 2018 Hot Toys LTD. Now, whether this be your desired look or you want to start sporting some shades onto Neo's head, this is the head sculpt. This is Neo's head sculpt. And actually, it's pretty good. When I did take it out of packaging initially, pardon me just for one split second, this t-shirt has kind of tucked itself into the socketed area of the neck. We'll have to fix that later. When I did take this out of packaging, there was something off on the face. Couldn't quite place what exactly it was. So often at times what I usually do is I put my thumb onto the top. Does that look like Keanu Reeves? Possibly yes. As I move my hand further down, does that look like Keanu Reeves? I suppose yes it does, thumb. Um, there's something off on the face, but it's not enough that it doesn't look like Neo. Maybe the face is a little too long. Of course, now we're comparing it to, um, of course, some of uh, Keanu Reeves' later films, like John John Wick, for example. There's also a John Wick Hot Toys figure. I'd like to get my hands on that one as well. This is a slightly younger Keanu Reeves. I say slightly younger. It seems like he is immortal. He never ages. If you notice that, he never seems to age. But there is something off on the head. I would say it sits at around 90% dead on. But something seems off. I just don't know what it is but it's of the better variety of head sculpts that we've seen versus trying to think of some negative head sculpts, but certainly is, well, like, for example, Tactical Suit Batman. That's like one of the worst comparisons you can make, a cowled hero versus Neo. But like that head sculpt missed something. Here, I don't feel like it's missing necessarily anything, but there's something, a sliver of something that's off on it. But overall, I'm very happy with the head sculpt. Sort of sound like I'm contradicting myself. The skin tone is well painted. You got a little, even even a like a little bit of slightly gray that's been added to the face. Give it a slight indication that there could be stubble starting to develop on the face sculpt. Maybe it seems like he seems slightly malnourished from the sides. Maybe it's more so from the front. I don't know. But the hair is done nice. It's got a slicked back look, as it does certainly from the film. Looks also that they've added a little bit of extra gray right around the top area where the comb has been applied to the hair and slightly slicked back, but it seems like there's a little bit of extra gray that's right around the crown. Would that be the crown area of the forehead? It's got a slightly bit of wrinkling happening in between. Sorry, my fingers were in the way. Slightly in between the eyebrow sections right there. A little bit of shade also around the eyes, a little bit of also little sheen that's reflecting off, the light frolicking off of the eyeballs of Neo. Again, I'm very happy with the head sculpt. Maybe there isn't anything wrong with the head sculpt. Maybe it's solely me. Maybe I need to step back and reevaluate myself. Maybe I think myself might be only 90% what I should actually look like. Now we're getting awfully deep with universal theories and complexities but anyways yeah there is something maybe there maybe there isn't I do like the head sculpt I think we're just gonna leave it at that we're gonna stop analyzing the head at the very end of the day when you're ready to close up shop and go home for the day I think I'm happy with the head sculpt perhaps I'm overly analyzing the figure more than it really necessarily has to be maybe I'm also being a little bit more philosophical about myself really don't have to be. So at the end of the day, I'm going to say it's a win. It's a successful head sculpt. And I'm going to avoid not putting my hands in front of the screen. What we are going to look at instead is the long trained jacket, long tailed jacket that comes included with the figure. Sadly, a case very much a magnet to hairs. If you have pets like I do, you may want to frequently take like a brush and just kind of wipe that down, uh, get the lint, get all the other stuff on it because black as it 
well, as it normally does, you can very much visibly see a lot of stuff, even on like displaying stuff on a review. I'm always cautious and aware that I don't want to have like hairs and stuff all over the jacket. But needless to say, it's split right in the middle. A very long tailed, I guess it really wouldn't be a tail, it would just be a long trained jacket that's split up the middle. And it does have a wire frame. So if you want to do bend it and manipulate it, if you want, you can do that. The outside looks like it probably could be like a cotton polyester. The inside possibly, not that I'm any fa material fabric expert, but the inside could be like a nylon material. It certainly does reflect in the way that nylon should reflect. Again, just hairs everywhere. A little bit also padding that it seems to be uh, have been added to the interior of Neo's jacket. And uh, if you wanted to put this onto the figure, best advice I could certainly make is take off his very large oven mitt sized hands. See, there we go, nitpicking the figure again. We're not really nitpicking. Keanu Reeves, I'm sure, does have very large hands. We're going to go ahead and there we go. Take the hands off. You did probably notice that one hand came off with the peg. Uh, you have these pair of pliers that just the tip of the trade once again, my friends, as I always do. I keep this pair of pliers readily available right by my reviewing station. So if I ever get the case where my hands, not my hands, the hands of the six scale figure get stuck, I just use my pair of pliers, just pop that right off. But needless, needless to say, we can twist the figure's arms back. There we go. And uh, what we are gonna do then is take the jacket, slide it all the way up, and slide it all the way up. Where I've debated in the past when it comes to these six scale figures that have jackets, like the uh, Underworld, for example, the Underworld Celine, I think her name was, I kind of have jumped back and forth whether I wanted to display her with the jacket, without the jacket. Same has also been the case also when it came to the Eric Draven Crow. Sometimes I felt like he needed the jacket. Sometimes I thought he didn't need the jacket. I think the case with Neo here, most definitely, like 100%, I feel like the figure should have its jacket. At least that's my own prerogative when it comes to displaying the figure. I think he just looks better, personally speaking, with the jacket. And really, all the scenes specific to the way he, when he is wearing the jacket, like the lobby scene, the bullet time scene, really like the majority of the film, at least when he's in the Matrix, he tends to be wearing the tr the trench coat. So for that reason, that's probably why I'm going to be displaying the figure with the trench coat, then instead without. Yes, I do agree that putting him in the jacket is probably the best way to go when it comes to displaying the figure. But needless to say, we move on to one of the more fragile finishing touches that you can put on the six scale figure release of Neo, and that is these sunglasses. Uh, unfortunately, they come to the same problem that many sunglassed sporting six scale figures, that's a lot of S's, seem to always have. One of the biggest problems, this is kind of closest to glasses that came included with the Terminator 1 Terminator. Uh, they are very sensitive, very thin, brittle plastic. So be very, very careful when you are ready to put these on the figure themselves, on specifically Neo here, that you are very, very careful. Certainly, moving the figure, be careful that these don't fall off. The glasses do look good, cast what looks to be only in the same colored plastic. It doesn't look like there's any additional paint to it, but these were all black glasses to start off with in the film. Hot Toys has done a pretty good job on them. Now, if you are ready to put them onto the figure, I'm just going to grab the figure right here. There are technically these little... I don't know if you can want to say them as slots, but just right above the ears, you can see like there's a section of his hair, sorry, my finger was in the way, where the hair almost pushes back a little further, just past the sideburns. You see that right there? But we're gonna go ahead and take the sunglasses. I just removed them quickly to rethink the way I was gonna enter into this problem. And you just wanna slide them into place. I will admit, I think once the glasses are in place, it looks a little bit more like Neo. Again, I don't know why I'm being so overly critical about it, because the head sculpt is really good. Sorry, I'm just taking a bit of hair coming off there. The glasses are slightly translucent. If the light hits it a certain way, you may be able to see the slight, slight trace of an eyeball. But you can see that where the sides of the glasses have tucked their way just behind the ears. Again, a nice way to complete the figure. I certainly hope, knock on wood, uh, as we have gotten ourselves Neo, I hope at the very least we're going to get ourselves a Morpheus and certainly a Trinity. Trinity would be outstanding. 
And uh, literally, when it comes to displaying these, I'll probably have them outstanding to one another in the lobby scene, probably trying to simulate the way that they were, you know, leaping and, and jumping through the, the behind the pylons section, the columns, uh, shooting against the security guards. Anyways, though, we don't really certainly want to talk about Trinity because there's really a lot to still cover off on this figure. Let's have a look at all the accessories. And there are a fair bit that come included with Neo here. We'll start with this one. This is the kind of the opener of the lobby scene where this is put through the detector to see if there's anything inside. And certainly there was a fair bit inside. Uh, luckily, well, luckily for us, there aren't firearms or any, any explosive devices inside. But inside, rather... Hot Toys, let me just unzip this for you. Inside, Hot Toys just packed it with foam. Explosive foam? No, not not, not quite. Uh, it does have some zipper compartments to it, primarily just the one zipper compartment. And uh, like I said, these fold over and you can Velcro close them shut. Seems like I am struggling with this. It's just a little bit more difficult. Whenever I do these reviews, I'm basically looking through a viewfinder uh, you also have a strap, a shoulder strap, and on the side, sadly, they're wheels, but they're just faux wheels. Same as well. This, I believe, is a pull cord, but it doesn't seem like it actually does pull. Instead, it looks like it's just molded in place. This really could have come with Trinity as well, because Trinity takes it off of the metal detector. But I guess, to be fair, Neo, I believe, is the one that's carrying it in, puts it down onto the conveyor. So I guess it would make sense that it comes included with him and not necessarily Trinity. Then for weapons, this is kind of where we get to the meat of all the cool stuff that comes included with the Neo. He does come with a fair share of accessories. Well, I guess we'll start with the smallest and we'll work our way up. He comes with a pair of pistols. The pistols do seem like an identical pair to one another. Initially thinking that they were just cast in what looks to be black plastic and left unscathed by paint. No, rather instead, you can see there's a little bit of scratching that they've done there with a little bit of silver paint, just to kind of give it some age. Uh, both the pistols, let me just go ahead and grab them, do have removable clips with bullets fully visible in the chamber. And those just slide into place like so. These do, uh, don't, they don't seem to cock back. Well, this one does, this one does not. I guess this just be a case where this one's just really stiff. And uh, when you do draw that back, you can see that there's the bullet sitting in the top visible area. Hasn't yet loaded into the chamber, but it's, again, that does open and close. You can certainly have Neo, if you want, just have it angled up. I believe in the opener, when they are walking into the lobby scene, he's got them tucked just behind his belt. Uh, so it does come included with that. Also comes with a series of multiple pairs of submachine guns of various models, of various sizes, and of various designs. Uh, we've got these smaller ones here, which again, I think were used in the lobby scene. Both of them do have the removable clips. And those just slide back into place. They've put some gold rivets there onto the sides. And this one does have, I believe these do have the little sliding, uh, maybe this one does not. I thought it actually had a sliding bolt that went back on them. But so both of them, again, given slight little dustings there of silver paint. Both of them, again, can be held into Neo's hands. Then as we move further along, we're getting to slightly larger scopes. A little bit slightly larger firepower as well. Again, carrying over to pairs of submachine guns. We have another variety of submachine guns right here. Again, with removable clips. Just a little stiffer on these ones. There you go. There's there's the bullet also in the chamber. This one here, you can also see the number of bullets that are sitting into the clip. And then that, again, slides just a little. This one's a little stiffer, but it just slides into the bottom, case, uh, bottom section right there. So again, you've got those ones there as well. By far, these ones are my favorite, though, of the submachine guns at least. Now, when he's coming into the lobby scene, I believe these are actually strapped basically around his neck and they're just draped to the sides of his jacket where you don't see them initially right away because his jacket is more closed and then when he opens up his jacket you can see how those are on either side of him these aren't technically attached all the time hot toys gives you this slightly uh, almost kind of fake leather strap that attaches to 
both the submachine guns. They're just clips. So really, if you wanted to, you can just detach the clip on the one side and remove it from itself. And disconnecting the other one, you've now severed the relationship between these two submachine guns, and you can then freely use them to shoot up the entire lobby. These ones again do have the removable clips. Bullet in the top of the case, uh, bullet on the top of the clip there. And this one also, let me just flip it around, has the little, I don't know if that would be the reloading lever there. I'm sure, I'm sure there's a more technical term for it. There, what it looks like on both sides. Exquisitely detailed, kind of missing paint, but I mean, you're not going to see these a bright yellow or red. That's going to certainly defeat the purpose of them. But again, for their accuracy level, all the machine guns look accurate to the way that they did in the films. For larger firepower, Neo also comes included with a pair of assault rifles. There's one, and there's the identical carbon copy down below. They are the same to one another. The scene most famous that I think of when I look at the assault rifles is the scene, of course, where he does the cartwheel, grabs one of the assault rifles, and as it continues, the cartwheel in air shoots then off a series of rounds to, of course, the neighboring reluctant security guards right there. There is a removable clip. I know I sound like a broken record, but all of them do have removable clips. And this one has a slightly larger bullet in the casing there. And then that just slides into place. Like with the others, there's not much in the way of paint, but accurately, they look like they did in the film. You still get a little bit of that silver. Here's sort of more dry brushed, kind of just to fill out some of those areas to give it a little bit of wear and tear. These of anything, if I'm going to be displaying the figure, I'm really kind of debating in all honesty of displaying Neo in the more cart white cart right flipping pose. And of course, I'll be displaying him with one of these. Figure also gets a series of interchangeable hands. Let me run through those right now for you. The figure starting first and foremost, he does come with a pair of closed fists, the more unexciting, in all honesty, hands that you would want to be displaying with a figure for all the st cool stuff that he comes included with. But he does have the relaxed or the the one, I just like to call them the one hands. These would be the hands, of course, suited for holding back the bullets. If again, the display stand could have had the means to display them with the bullets, sigh. But still, those are the hands. They do look big. I have to still feel that they do look big for the figure. It's kind of a case where if you do take the jacket off and you're displaying Neo with these hands, you can't help but look at them and feel that they are a little oversized. But again, that's the hard part when you have a character, like an actor, like Keanu Reeves. He's very thin, he's very small framed. So anything such as like normal sized hands are gonna look off proportioned on him. But again, these are probably the accurate sized hands. I'm sure they are. There's what the interior of the hands look like. We don't really spend a lot of time talking about the hands, but you can see that there is just varying of uh, slightly varying little speckles and abnormal little paint defects there, well, skin defects there, as you can see. There's the other side. You can see a little bit of the veins also running through the top sections of the hands. So he does come with those. Uh, of course, for all the firepower, you would think that he would come with trigger finger hands. Uh, he does also come with a pair, and whoop, it should actually be this way, but again, you get the you get the idea. He comes with a pair of those, uh, and then also he comes with a pair of partially relaxed hands. Again, if you want to just kind of display them draped to the side of him, uh, he does have those as well. Sometimes you get so used to seeing these that often at times I feel like I'm about to forget to mention that he also comes with a pair of included interchangeable or replacement pegs should something happen to the existing pegs that he has in his sockets. Again, you saw my little trick. You can just use a pair of uh, pliers just to pull those out. But he does come with a pair of uh, an extra pair should you need them. He also comes included with what seems to be a pair of little silver rivets. I try to think to myself, whereabouts on the figure could there be rivets? I'm looking, of course, anywhere around the torso section, the lower pant area. The only thing I can pinpoint as possibility for where these may go is these little sections right here, the straps that strap across the tops of his boots. Other than that, I don't really see any other place where these necessarily could go. Oh, 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 oh. One other thing I wanted to talk about before we looked at the figure's articulation, yes, hair still becomes ever so much the problem with this character. Just take the hair off. 
maybe a small little desk vacuum would be very helpful in a case like this. One other thing I wanted to talk about though, as something I wanted to start talking about when we had Neo without his jacket and then completely just lost sight of the very mention of it. But uh, I did want to mention that his torso, there's another hair right there, and his torso seems very irregularly sloped inward. Um, when you see it from his jacket being removed, it's maybe not as obvious, or maybe it is even more obvious, but it seems like his, his torso is sloped this way, slightly arched back. It doesn't also help that he's got, I don't want to even say a bulge, but his torso goes like in this way, and then his pants go out this way, that it does seem a little awkward. And this part, I actually went back and just kind of rewatched some of the footage from the film just to see if that was actually the case. And again, it would be really hard to pinpoint it just because of the fact that Keanu Reeves is such a thin actor. Maybe it does slope in as much as it does, but it seems like it really drops in. It comes at a normal kind of leveled off point and then just automatically, just right away it goes and it's just kind of angles in sharply. I don't know if you can see it or not. Maybe again, a lot of it could just be optical illusion. The torso naturally should slope in inward for his stomach muscles. It probably, maybe it's actually this piece right here, this little extra loop that's throwing off my proportions, or at least giving me that optical illusion feeling like his pants are sticking out this way and his torso sticking too far in. That very well could be the problem here. Okay, so let's run through Neo's articulation. Now his head rotates all the way around. When you get this guy out of packaging, there's a plastic film, as there usually is, around the base of the neck. The problem is the first time you do it, you may want to... I have some tweezers for this. I don't even know why I'm not using the tweezers, but... I'm always wanting to untuck the neck, because the, the neck from the shirt now has sunk its way into the open socket, where when I took the head out, and then I put the head back in. Like a black hole, it sort of just sucked all the fabric in with it. But needless to say, his head rotates all the way around. It hinges up and down, and hinges back and forth. Hot Toys doesn't seem too frequently anymore to separate the head, unless it's a masked head. If it's a bare face and a bare neck, often they usually keep it as one appliance and not two. So the head does rotate all the way around, but he doesn't really have a secondary ball joint because of that reasoning. And when you do rotate the neck too far back, you probably already saw what ends up happening. You leave this big open gap, and then the shirt falls right into it, just like a trap. Just like a trap. He has an upper torso crunch as well. He has a ball joint. So basically, you can move the torso all the way around. And similarly, he does also have that in the lower torso as well. His arms do hinge outward. Uh, forward and back do get a little bit more restricted, I find. They get a little tighter to move forward and back. Uh, one thing I do, I'm very happy to report as well, is that he does have the shoulder crunch. So you can hinge the, the shoulders forward, forward, back. And then again, you have whatever, pos whatever posability you can get forward and back on the arms. But I do find like they stop abruptly and they get very, very, very tight. And uh, I'm sure this is just a case where I need to loosen them up a little bit. But I feel like there's a point where it's telling me I can't move the arms any bit further forward for fear that it's going to break the arms. Again, like if you are wanting him to shoot, for example, you can arch the shoulders forward, the arms forward this way, and you can still have the arms forward. But it seems like they are, maybe I'm just going to have to force that a little bit because I'm sure the arms can come all the way up. There's just a little bit of resistance on this particular figure of mine. He does have a swivel on the bicep section. He does have not one, but two hinges in the elbow. And then he has the swivel in the hand. Often at times, this is something that does plague six scale figures, certainly hot toy figures when I've reviewed them, is rotating the hands, the pegs, the hands from the pegs come loose. Again, again, you just want to wiggle those back into place. That's a small problem. I'm not going to certainly uh, go crying about it. <laughs> uh, the legs split out. Uh, you can move them forward. You can move them back. He has a swivel on the top cut of the thigh right there. See? Uh, double hinge on the knee. Uh, and then he's got the swivel in the boots. Now, again, the boots, going back to this as we sort of started the review here, 
look how we've kind of worked full circle coming back around. The feet rotate all the way around. Maybe that is why they have to be a little bit more looser. The feet move up and down, but because this feels again like this is plastic, this part here feels like it's a material. Again, I'm worried about right here, right there, where that's going to start splitting, just because of the what feels like very thin, almost like a fake leather that they've used for the boots. I mean, the boots aesthetically look really good, but again, I'm just really worried that excessive bending of the feet will eventually start splintering and splitting that fabric that they've used, that they've decided to use for the boots. I feel like there's a better choice that they could have gone with with the boots. Not using all plastic, of course. Plastic, I think, would have been the wrong route to go. But I think there really should have been a different type of material that they, they could have potentially used. All in all, a really solid figure from Hot Toys. Kind of feel bad, I have to admit, that I nitpicked the head sculpt as much as I do. The more that I'm looking at it, and the time that I've been looking at it behind the scenes, the more I'm really digging and loving the head sculpt for Neo. Maybe I was a little too harsh. Maybe again, I have to kind of step back and just kind of gauge the overall and not just the specific, see the bigger picture and not the small, kind of in the same way that Morpheus would talk to Neo about the larger scale and the larger scope of the Matrix. Mm, now that's actually rather deep. There's not really much that I would change the Neo here. From a figure standpoint, everything hits its mark and it looks accurate to the way it did in the film. Even the head sculpt. The head portrait is gorgeous. I don't know why I was so critical about the head sculpt. Maybe I was looking for something that really wasn't there after all. Sort of kind of like Neo was in Matrix. Sort of interesting how we've paralleled ourselves the way that we have. Neo doubting the reality of the Matrix and me doubting the accuracy to his head sculpt. I think we've grown a little bit in this review, at least I have. Yes, the body is done accurately. Uh, the costume, though a magnet, unfortunately, to hairs and fibers and anything else small that's in your room, may cling themselves to the fabric that's making up the majority, if not all the majority, of his trench coat. But everything else, like I said, I'm very happy with how this figure turned out. The boots are small, of a problem that is, because you're probably not going to be bending the boots too often, but I did feel the need to mention in this review that the material did feel cheap at least that faux leather material that they used in the boots. I'm worrying that it, that is something that may splinter or split, depending on how frequently you're moving the boots. But that's about it. That's about all I would really change to the figure. The glasses, like I said, are fragile. Um, maybe one other thing that they could have do, or something that Hot Toys could do for future releases, something thin and fragile, such as, as glasses here on Neo, or the glasses that were on the Terminator, probably could be given a second pair, just in case. Just You don't want to want something to break on a figure, but even if it does, it's good to know that you would have a backup just in case. So maybe that's something that Hot Toys could have done here with Neo and future released figures that have very thin, fragile components. We're not talking guns. We're talking things like sunglasses and stuff that logically do have a lifespan to them. And there's a good chance that if you're not careful, if you're not sensitive to putting them onto Neo's head, for example, you could break the sides, the side arms, the little side bands that go onto the ears. I don't really know what the actual name is for that part of the glasses, but maybe a second pair of glasses could have gone a long way. Here is really where my biggest obstacle comes with this figure. It's those little extra things, the little seasonings to an otherwise really good steak. For as good as the figure does look, for as great as the accessories are, the only mark that I think Hot Toys missed when it came to this release is the extra accessories that could have gone onto the base. For you making use of a bullet time pose, it's not something I'm probably going to be displaying him with, or with him using the one pose in which, of course, he's holding back the bullets, or even the pose in which you've got him depicting from the lobby, all have one thing in common. Bullets why they couldn't have used some plastic, some ripples of bullets, something that could have been attached to the front of the display base. Then at the very least, you're creating a diorama. You're not just putting a figure in a pose, you're putting things with the figure that logically makes sense for that pose. I really wish Hot Toys could have delivered at least that by incorporating some rippled bullets or flying bullets, all of which could have been pegged into the same place on the front of the display stand. Just have some few holes in the front of the display stand where those could have been pegged into place. 
that's it. That's the only thing I wish this figure could have had. Other than that, very, very happy with this particular release, and I'm super glad I was able to pick this one up. Today we were having a look at the Hot Toys. This was the brand new Hot Toys, by the way. This was the Matrix Neo 1-6 scale collectible figure, which I didn't mention, but it's product code MMS 466, just in case you're wondering. With this one down, and I believe we are getting ourselves Agent Smith, I certainly hope this isn't the end of our Matrix 6 scale figure releases. I hope certainly we're going to get ourselves a Trinity, and that at the very least we get ourselves a Morpheus. I don't think we really need anyone else other than that. I don't think we need to expand out to Matrix Reloaded or Matrix Revolutions, but at the very least, I would be very content with a Neo, which we have now, an Agent Smith, which I believe we are getting, a Trinity, and a Morpheus. That's it. That's all we need. At least that's that's what this humbled reviewer believes. Let me know what you guys think of this figure down below, or if you've had the chance to pick up this figure for yourself. Let me know if you have any issues with them, or if it was just me. Because sometimes I maybe say issues that aren't really there. I don't know. It's possible. Either way, though, make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below, my friends, my colleagues of the interweb. Certainly more videos like this, maybe not exactly like this, but videos similar to this will be making soon their travels to this channel so stay tuned for those make sure as well you hit the bell notification and why not while you're at it after you're finished up finishing up this video and finishing up the sandwich that you were eating i know you were eating a sandwich while you were watching this video you deny it but i know when you're finished all that my friends make sure you swing on over to the home page as well check out all the videos that are in the videos section that way you know if there's something you may have missed along the way and feel free to check out those videos as well as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.